Um, hello, everyone. A uh, very good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar on how to start an e-commerce brand brought to you by Social Beat and DigiGrad. So a uh, little bit about us. Uh, we are an edtech initiative by Social Beat, a multi-city digital marketing agency based in Bangalore. And uh, we have been in this industry for nine long years and have also worked with brands like Swiggy, Paytm, Jaguar, DataClick, and many more. Uh, also, we are a Google and Facebook premier partner, and uh, we come with an aim to help uh, working professionals and young aspirants evolve in their career. So uh, let's get started. And uh, today uh, we have a very special guest with us, Mr. Amol Parab. Welcome, Amol. Thank you. And uh, uh, so he's the co-founder at DigiCrest Media. And before starting up his own advertising agency in Mumbai, uh, Amol has worked in three different startups and uh, with more than 25 national and international clients and uh, almost four years in business of digital marketing and branding. He started his journey as a content writer, then a creative director, and now a co-founder. So also he believes in providing the best digital solutions to startups and is a passionate writer and photographer. Overall, a multi-talented personality. <laughs> we are very glad to have you here. Thank you for this intro, Sachi. Yeah, so uh, I'll be handing over the session to you now. And uh, before we start, I would just request the audience that uh, if you have any questions, you can drop in the comment box so that we can have a look at them in the end. Perfect. Over to you. Thank you. So welcome to the session, guys. Definitely a great uh, weather today. And uh, I, I really appreciate the kind of enthusiasm you have for learning digital marketing, for learning more about SEO, that even if in such kind of weather, if you want to attend a session like this, wherein you want to learn more about digital, it definitely shows me the kind of passion you guys have. So without wasting any more time, let's start with today's session on SEO and why it is so important for your brand. Because right now, just like Sachi told you, that if you are looking forward towards building your own e-commerce setup or an e-commerce store, it is very much important that you understand the essence of SEO and how it is going to function for your brand. So I'll be sharing my screen. Sachi, is my screen visible? Yes. Perfect. So guys, today's, today's talk is mainly going to be upon search engine optimization and understanding why your brand needs it. Let's start with how does Google work? Because everyone is aware about SEO. Sabko pata hai search engine optimization hota kya hai. It's mainly a process by which you get your website ranking on the top page of Google. But before you go to the crux of search engine optimization, before you understand how you do it, let's understand your battleground. Let's understand how does your god google works so now we are going to look at the back end of google and after this you are going to be empowered with a little more extra set of skill as well as understanding as to how the massive search engine of google works so it's not just google in fact this mechanism works uh, similar for the other search engine also such as your yahoo search or bing so before before uh, this entire process of search engine started, okay, these guys came up with a vision. Okay, for example, Google, they come came up with a vision that we are going to provide a one-stop solution for anyone on this earth to understand or do their research or do their search on our search engine and get the right amount of information, right amount of content at the right place and right time. So it is their moral duty for them to provide that information in the best manner, in the utter quality manner. But what, how do they do it? Do they feed the information all, all by themselves? No. They depend on their partners. Who are their partners? They are the websites which are enlisted on Google for various content perspectives. Google work is Google is a massive search engine. Multiple millions and billions of website and web pages, uh, millions and Google that provide information at every given time. So how does Google ensure that any end piece of information that they are sharing with their audience is of the optimal, uh, optimal uh, quality? For that, they have a surveillance, a surveillance management called as Google crawling. Google crawling is a process by which what Google does is it crawls all the pages which are available on Google. What does crawling mean here? Crawling is nothing but 
uh, surveillance wherein they start checking they start checking the pages they start checking the uh, websites which are available on google and they start going, giving tick marks you know just like how people evaluate while doing a particular interview or how does your viva evaluation happens wherein uh, certain brackets of marks are allocated for uh, certain things right from your body language to the knowledge you know the treatment is very much same on google's end so consider you have a website um, say abc.com okay it's listed on google so what happens is on a very daily uh, on a very frequent basis say about at the interval of uh, five days or 10 days these google algorithms which does the work of uh, surveillance they land on your website these algorithms are called as spiders or bot what these guys do is they crawl through your website they flow through your website they go on checking every every parameter of your website okay they see okay is the content fine okay 10 marks for that is the domain a uh, top level domain a good domain okay 10 marks for that are there adequate images okay 10 marks for that is the content well structured is it easy to understand is it easy to read is it very complex are there right keywords in the content and on basis of all of these these uh, algorithms go on giving marks now how, how does these marks impact you for example you are the owner of abc.com how does that impact you it's very simple on basis on these marks that you get the ranking of your website increases so coming back to our forte of seo that is search engine optimization seo is nothing but a process by which you make your website as much presentable as possible in front of google so that whenever these crawl lands on your website they start giving you better marks and on basis of those better credibility you start getting uh, a, a higher a higher position on the google page ranking so this is guys the back end of google in which how google functions and on basis of that, we are going to understand how do you go ahead with the SEO operations. So what do, you, what do we do with it? We have already answered this question. Just make me happy, fellas. You need to make Google happy with whatever you're doing on your website. And once it is happy, it's going to give you your reward. That is your higher ranking. So search engine optimization is the key. So what does search engine optimization entail? There are multiple facets of SEO. The first facet is definitely technical reworking. Whenever a website is made by a particular developer, when it is handed over to an SEO, okay, it first entails working on the technical aspect of the website. That is the domain, the hosting, then, then how it is coded, uh, the tags which are utilized, which we are definitely going to look at further down this presentation. Second is the content aspect. You know, you might be thinking SEO is all about uh, links and uh, codings and etc. No, no, guys. SEO also involves a very strong contribution of content. So content restructuring, optimization of content. Optimization of content is making the content easy to understand, making the content easy to analyze, adding the right keywords in the content so that whenever someone comes on your website, they are not looking at a bunch of flowery words and jargons, but they are actually looking at some meaty content, which which can give them the answer to that to the query that they have just run across on Google. The fourth aspect is of website speed optimization. It is very important that your website speed is good. Uh, whenever anyone clicks on your website, it opens up as soon as possible because slower websites are a big no-no on Google. So that is also a very strong part of SEO. Constant updating is very much important. So it's like uh, Google wants to understand if your website is updating itself or not. The reason behind that is Google believes that the, that, uh, the, the latest information, the better it is for the users. If they feel that there is a website which has not updated itself for past say, about two months or three months, they feel, okay, the website is obsolete. The uh, information which is there on the website is obsolete and maybe it's not catching up with the changing times, which is why updating the information on website is also a very strong part of SEO. And finally, guys, finally is about network building. You cannot be a loner when you are there on the World Wide Web. Your website needs to have friends. 
and we uh, that we are not exactly talking about facebook friends over here guys we are talking about building network of websites and once you have a good network supporting your website that also adds to the value which works in your favor proceeding to the next slide about understanding the basic difference between search ads and seo many a times what happens is when you're new to the uh, process of seo you run a particular search query so here you can see here as highlighted so taking a reference of best seo in india okay so anything that you guys anything that you run on google whatever you write okay best cosmetic brand best uh, lipstick brand or maybe best shirt brand or whatsoever anything that you write you know even if you write top 10 skyscrapers in dubai that's also a search query anything that you write in the search bar of google is called as a search query we are definitely going to make a mental note of that because this is a word which we are going to use throughout the process of seo so whenever a search query is run there are two types of results which props up first is this one which is always on the top of the page and then you have these now it is very important for us to understand the differentiation between these two because this first one even if it looks like a proper uh, search result it is not a search result it is an ad it is an ad which is being run by a particular company so if we go by this particular example right now we can see uh, if we run a query of best suv in india we might see this link so this is not an seo optimized link guys this is an ad which is run by lexus india and it was going to stay on the top of the page till the time lexus india continues to uh, continue with that campaign till the time it continues to pay google for giving them this slot but guys here you can see there are two two other websites we can see one by dry spark and other one by carwale now these are the websites which are highly optimized for this particular search query so this is the aim this is the aim that we need to reach if we are in say into the business of e-commerce of say about shoes or maybe apparels so this is the aim where we want to reach and not this because this is a different ball game altogether and today we are mainly going to talk about how to get organically on the top ranking section of google so the process of seo it is bifurcated into four parallels we have already seen that there are eight there are eight facets of seo now let's talk about the process how it works the first is keyword research it is very important for us to understand what are other keywords that we are targeting okay again going back uh, to the reference of uh, suvs uh, say if i'm say about if i'm tata okay and i'm launching a new version of say safari or i want to make the uh, website of safari and uh, nexon very strong i wanted to rank over mahindra i want i wanted to rank over even the range rovers and the land rovers okay <laughs> so what i'll do is i'll find out keywords these keywords are the ones which people are searching the search query that we just saw about that's nothing but a keyword so we will find out the keywords which are uh, associated with the nature of business so maybe best suvs in india uh, safest suvs in india top selling suvs in india so we'll go with the words that first define our core business we cannot go with the keywords or we cannot go with the search terms which are say near about to our business no no we cannot only talk about uh, cars or we cannot only talk about passenger cars while doing seo it is very important that we stick to the right keyword which rightly defines the nature of our business we are suv makers so we are going to indulge with keywords which are into uh, the business of suvs second we will see there are there are tools that we we will look forward there are tools through which you can understand which all keywords are having a good amount of search volume um, search volume is the number of people searching for those keywords so there are tools which tell you that okay if i feel as tata i feel that best best suv in india is going to be the right keyword for me i'll put it into the tool and the tool will tell me that okay okay amul there are 1000 people searching for this keyword so voila that's that's a good number because i might do my maths i might see okay if there are 1000 people searching for this keyword on a say about daily basis at least i can expect 
100 people coming on my website out of which i can expect at least one or two people ideally turning out to be a high intent inquiries for me so while doing the keyword research it is the second mandate is understanding what is the search volume of the keyword and third mandate is understanding the difficulty level of the keyword so if i'm if if i'm newly doing seo for tata i have never been i've never done seo for them okay uh, sorry if if tata has not done seo for itself and they are very much new into this game it is very important for them to look out for keywords which have a medium or a easy seo difficulty but a higher search volume why because keywords with a higher difficulty are the ones which are already being used by the competitors and as you guys know seo is a little slow process so if you take keywords with a higher difficulty definitely your process is going to be longer than expected so it's always ideal to go with keywords that one describe the nature of business two which have a good search volume and three have a difficulty ratio which you can shoulder so mainly go for keywords which are of medium or a lower difficulty ratio but have a higher search volume the second part is about keyword optimization now you have a list of keywords say i know okay there are 10 keywords on which i want to rank my website and these 10 keywords are going to play a pivotal role in giving me the right kind of traffic now the second part is about keyword optimization in keyword optimization guys what you do is you start adding the keywords in the places of your website you add it to uh, the 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 head head the header of your website you add it to the body content of your website you start using it also you should also start using it in some of your social media posts you start using it in the youtube descriptions that you write about your car you start using the keywords in every every uh, place possible so that whenever a google crawler comes across that keyword it start connecting the dots it start connecting the dots and it start reaching your website the third part is about adding content just a while back we spoke about the part of updating a website so many times guys you might have seen that many of the e-commerce website have a ha, have a blog you know uh, i mean the, the the day before only i was checking out that even uh, the the godrej nature's basket okay a very good e-commerce website mainly being used du during the pandemic times these days they have a blog they have a blog they talk about recipes they talk about using their food products do you really feel that anyone goes and re reads those blogs i mean we have blogs by master chefs we have blogs by amazing influencers do you really think anyone goes out and checks out the blog written by say about godrej nature's uh, uh, nature's basket not really not really but why do they still do it why do they still post a blog once in a week why do i as a seo person recommend my clients posting a blog at least once or twice a week that's because google wants your website to be updated google wants your website to be sh constantly sharing new information as uh, as frequent as possible so adding a blog is definitely the easiest way of updating your website because you cannot go out and keep changing the base content of your website right you cannot go out and change the vision and mission have you ever done that would you ever prefer doing that no not at all would you ever prefer going out and changing the uh, content which is there on your home page no not at all so how do you do it how do you go about it you add blogs another way of adding content guys is adding landing pages landing pages are extra pages on your website which you add only for the purpose of seo you do not add them to the top uh, search bar you do not add them to the top navigation bar what you do is you just create dump pages which talk really well about your business that have good amount of keywords that have high quality content okay and you add it to the footer of your website we are going to come to these parts okay guys so uh, even if we are looking at some jargon such as footers or navigation bar we are going to look at them but this is the way you add content to your website and you keep on updating it the fourth process of seo is backlinking of the websites remember we spoke about making friends this is what we are talking about so backlinking of your website is nothing but building network of your website how do you build network is 
you reach out to other websites which have a good amount of SEO ranking. You reach out to websites which have a good amount of content on them, which is also relevant to your business. So giving you a reference, if I am Tata and we just saw Carwale is having a very good ranking, what we what we'll do is we'll contact Carwale and we'll we'll contact Carwale and we'll tell them, hey, how about you put a blog about our new SUV? How about you put a blog about our say about uh, next in dark edition? And just put in a small link about uh, the uh, just put in a small link of the Nexon's uh, landing page there. You know what happens after they do that? There is a bridge formed between the Carvale website and the Tata website. This bridge is called as a backlink. So SEO is a process to which you build so many bridges between your website and other websites which are related to your domain of industry or websites which are say about a forum based website such as a Quora or say a, a WordPress wherein you get more blogs which are related to your industry or even social media websites such as uh, Twitter or LinkedIn. These play a very pivotal role because they build these bridges through which one a crawler can reach your website now you say about uh, if 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 you put a, a comment on quora okay and you put your website link do you think the google crawler is first going to read the comment on quora or is it going to reach your website it's definitely going to read the comment on quora because that's a very uh, highly credible website on google so say for instance the crawler comes on the comment that you have put on quora it sees the keyword the keyword is linked to your website it gives it a path to reach your website so backlink definitely plays a very important role in first attracting crawlers to your website so that you can your website can be crawled on a very regular basis so that it can have its credibility increased and its ranking pushed upwards and second building network which plays a very important role in increasing the credibility of your website so till now this is the process of SEO, how it works. First, you decide the keywords. Second, you add the keywords. Third, you add extra content. And fourth, you build a network of your website. In a nutshell, this is how SEO works. But we are going to bifurcate it further and understand the smaller, smaller uh, intricacies of it. Hmm. Sakshi, by any chance, uh, my control on screen share is gone. I'm not able to switch the slide. Uh, yes, it is stuck on the process of SEO. Yeah, I'll, I'll just stop the share and uh, cast it again. Yeah, sure. Visible? Yes. Thank you. So now we looked at the, um, the, the eight facets of SEO. We looked at the process of SEO. Now let's make things a little easier. Let's talk about two types of SEO. First is the on-site SEO and second is the off-site SEO because you might have started wondering till now, okay, this is the process Amul has told, okay, this is, this is how you do it. But how do I decide? How do I decide when do I have to put more content? How do I decide when do I have to build those links? So how about just uh, bifurcating those two processes into two different types of SEO? So there are, I guess, two types of SEOs. First is your on-site SEO and second is your off-site SEO. Your on-site SEO is basically the process through which you make your website strong, strong enough so that it can compete with the other websites and get a better ranking on Google. On-site SEO, uh, on SEO entails changing the content of your website, adding the keywords on your website, optimizing the tags. We are going to look at the tags later on. So optimizing the tags of your website, improving the uh, content structure, improving the UI UX. That is how your website looks. What is the look and feel of your website? Is it friendly enough? Is it welcoming enough? Is it really dark? Or is, is the text easy to read? All of these guys, all of these parameters play a very important role in SEO because Google, with changing time, Google has turned very smart. It's no more a basic search engine. It's no more a engine that works only on algorithms. You can consider it as a superior human 
which has all the abilities to track your website, understand your website and rank your website. So it ensures that your website is having the right interface for its audience. You see, the audience which is coming on Google, it is Google's responsibility to provide them with the right amount of content. So monitoring your website and seeing if it is a good piece of content to be shown to the audience is Google's responsibility. So making your website beautiful, making your website easy and convenient and adding the keywords and content on your website is the part that you talk about on on-site SEO. The second part is of off-site SEO. Off-site SEO, as, as the term suggests, it is the process in which you work on the other websites. You work on the uh, external external parameters. Okay, This is not the uh, process in which you work on your website. This is a process in which you work on the other websites. So the process of uh, backlinking is mainly something which is the part of off-site SEO. So going on the other websites such as Quora or WordPress, putting out a comment, putting out um, a, an answer to a Quora question and adding your website link to that or reaching out to other websites of your, uh, which are in the nature of your business, uh, requesting them to put out a blog for your website and adding a link to that. All of that part is generally the part of offset SEO. So coming to the details of onset SEO, what is onset SEO to how it works? Ta-da! A little bit of scary situation right now, guys. Yes. Let, let's let's simplify this. Onset SEO is the largest process. It is the process through which you start with your SEO activity. It is a one-time process. You can't really say one-time process, but a process which you do not keep doing frequently. So your onset SEO starts with a SEO audit. SEO audit is it is a process in which you understand what all are the shortcomings of your website. Okay, it is a process in which you see if the H1 tags are pres present, that is the header tags are present on your website. Is the URL of your website fine? Is the URL of your other pages of your website fine? Because Google doesn't like complicated URLs. Google doesn't like extra long URLs. It doesn't like having, uh, you know, say percentage symbol or hashtag symbol or say random slashes on, 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 on a URL. It likes simple and sweet URLs. So is the URL of your website fine? Does it need any kind of working? Checking the website loading speed. How fast is your website to load? Checking out the products, uh, sorry, the, uh, the pages which are bringing down the speed. Working upon those pages, working upon uh, the images. If, if there are large images, if there are large videos on your website, okay? So working on compressing them and ensuring that the website loading speed is faster. All of that is part of your on-site SEO audit because your audit, it is something which will bring out all these um, fault points right into your face. It is a process by which you will understand the shortcomings of your website from a SEO standpoint. And it is something which will help you make your website strong enough to compete with the competitors and rank strongly on your uh, Google search engine. Coming to the other points of audit, so checking the presence of SSL certificate. SSL certificate is the certificate that you get from your hosting uh, hosting partner, which um, which reflects to the Google that this website is secured. There can be uh, there can be no data breach. There can be no hacking which can happen through this website or via this website into the user's uh, phone or a laptop. Putting a sitemap on the website which enlists all the pages on on the website. Checking if the word count is appropriate or not. Google demands that every page of your website should at least have 200 to 300 words. So checking if those many words are present on your website or not. Checking if the keywords are present or not. Checking for the duplication of content. Guys, Google hates duplication. If you want to piss off Google, just replicate a page or just replicate some content on your website and you're doomed. Google hates duplication. So checking for duplication of content, fixing that, all of that is a part of your on-site SEO audit. 
once you have the list of all these issues right in front of you you can make these changes you can get your developer to make these changes and voila your website is already 60% strong and 60% SEO friendly moving to the part of keyword research this is something we have already spoken about but we'll speak about it at length right now so keyword research as we already know we are going to find out keywords which are which are um, in accordance to your industry of business which have a good amount of higher search volume and which have a lower or a medium difficulty level once we have these keywords we have to start placing them we have to place them into the body content of your website we have to put them into the head content of your website we have to put them into the uh, meta content of your website so just like i've given an example here if my, if for example if my keyword is customer experience or online reputation management and a local marketing then i will do seo on these keywords only i will not reach out to other keywords which are somewhere near to this area of business i will not talk about uh, say about social listing i will not talk about social monitoring i will mainly talk about these parts only of my business so while adding keyword guys say for example you're writing a new blog for your website while adding keyword it is very important that you see that you're adding the keyword on the in the title of your blog in the first pair of your blog in the first uh, sub headline of your blog and then eventually at the concluding pair of your blog why do you do this because this outlays a map for the crawler so any time a crawler comes on your blog any time your crawler comes on a landing page and you have your keywords added in such kind of structure it gives a map okay it will check okay the keyword is there in the title done fine it will then see okay the keyword is in the initial uh, initial part of the uh, intro content okay fine the content looks fine it 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 is something which will keep my users hooked on then it will see that okay it's part of the subheadings also okay so this is how you will join the dots for the crawler and will ensure that the crawler is reaching and is uh, uh, scrolling through your content till the end because that's why you need to put one more keyword at the concluding statement of your blog so that it can attract the crawler till then coming to the part of tags there are multiple tags available on your website first tag is called as the title tag okay so this is the header um, the 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 head of your website so if at all you go on a website i think let's let's go on an example itself i have an example ready example for you so right now here you can see this is something called as a header one tag that is called as the h1 tag it plays a very important role in seo it is very important to have these tags present all your website so for an instance if you're making say about um, um, an e-commerce platform say for say shoes okay you're making it for uh, sneakers you have say about uh, five variety of sneakers so it is very important that whenever you're listing the product you put the text in such manner that it takes an h1 tag and you're putting your keywords say about your um you're using a keyword such as online shoe market in india okay so you ensure that you're putting the keyword in your h1 tag this is something that is looked that that is called as the header two tag now guys whenever you're building your website or whenever you're doing seo if you're at all you're using tools such as say uh, a shopify or a wordpress while adding the content itself you get an option to mark a particular line or to mark a particular sentence as a h1 tag or a h2 tag or a h3 tag but if you are doing it in a html if you are doing it in codes then you have to write uh, into the brackets as h1 tag or h2 tag so that it is highlighted that this statement is the header statement so that the due importance is given to that so whenever the crawler comes on that particular page it sees okay so this is the header one statement this is the header two statement coming back to the slides uh, slide of tags so we already spoke about the title tag we spoke about the h1 h2 tag there is something called as a h3 tag so for example if you made a uh, if you made a sub paragraph you gave it a headline and that you turned as a h2 tag now you make a sub paragraph into that sub paragraph okay you make a sub sub paragraph 
and you give heading to that. You'll take it as you'll take it as a H2 tag. Then the other content which you write is always called as a body content. Now there is something called as an alt tag. It is a very interesting phenomenon. So what happens is whenever a crawler comes on your website, okay, it can only flow through the content which is available on the website. It cannot read the images. No matter how smart Google is, crawler is little dumb enough that it cannot read images. So what to do in that scenario? If you're building an e-commerce website or say about you're building a photography website or a portfolio website for an artist, okay, and you want to do SEO for that, Pictures speak more, uh, what, this is the, the amazing saying, what does it say? Pictures speak thousand words, yeah. Pictures speak more than thousand words. So you want to put out a picture, how will you do it? We'll put out all many pictures, but you know that the crawler is not going to uh, read those pictures. It's not going to crawl through those pictures. So how, how do you bring them to the notice of Google and say, hey, I have great pictures over here. I want you to divert users on, your, on my website. So this is where something called as an alt tag comes into the picture. So to make your picture readable, you have to add an alt tag to it. An alt tag is a textual form of a tag in which you can put the keywords and put it associated on your picture. So how does it happen is whenever you're uh, uploading a picture on a page, there is an option to put an alt tag. There's an option by which you can put a description to the picture, you can put a title to the picture, and then you have an option to put an alt tag. So all you need to do is you need to put your keywords, you need to describe that picture, and voila. Things are done. Next time when the crawler is on your website, it is going to go through that alt tag and understand, okay, there is a picture here. Many a times, guys, you might have seen that whenever you run a Google image search, okay, and you find a nice image, say about um, yeah, you're doing a Google search for say cars, okay? You find a nice image of a Range Rover and you click on that. It takes you to a different website. Why does it take you? It's because an alt tag is added behind a picture, which is why it was being shown in the Google search image results. So that's how alt tags work wonderfully for you and also work in bringing your traffic. Finally is the meta tag. Meta tag is the, or, or uh, some people prefer to call it as the meta tag. It goes by your pronunciation. So the meta tag plays a very important role because it is the small text which you always see behind below a Google search result. When you run a search and you see that there are smaller text in gray written, which, which is like a short description of the URL, that is called as the meta tag. And putting your keyword there is also very important because it gives you the right amount of traffic. So here are some references I have for you. So you've already seen this. This is the title. This is the navigation bar of the website. This is the H1 tag and this is the H2 tag. So this is, this is a footer of a website. This is a footer of a very highly SEO optimized website. So, uh, a while back, we spoke about landing pages, adding landing pages to the photo. So this is how people do it. This is also uh, whichever this website is, they have added a nice amount of landing pages here, how to build an online store, how to design a website. But they don't, they don't really need all of these links on their navigation bar. That is this particular part, right? But they definitely want the crawler to know that, okay, they are experts at building websites. They are experts at uh, building online store or teaching on how to build an online store. And they, which is why they put out landing pages like these. So this is a example of a meta tag, which I've already spoken about. So these, these small things that you see here, these are called as meta tag. And so very important to put the keywords because this is again a screenshot I've taken after running a search uh, for best SUVs and here you can see best SUV. It's already this one, best SUV, best SUV. So this is, this is uh, the importance of keywords, adding keywords to the meta tag. So guys, while doing SEO, it is also important that you add buttons on your website wherever possible so that you improve the uh, user experience so this is this is a very good example of a company which is also into the uh, business of building user experience so 
adding a button such a CTA button such as call call for a free trial or sign up now for seven days free trial or adding a chatbot also works to fund us in uh, optimizing your website because this makes your website as human as possible wherein it is giving the scope for your audience to engage with your website it is giving the scope for your audience to speak to your website to reach out to your website and google like websites which are engaging because google wants people to interact with people they do not want people to interact with businesses they do not want people to interact with uh, technicalities they want to bring out the uh, experience on google so seamless that whenever i'm running a search google feels that okay amul should reach out to a website which will communicate itself to amul in such a manner that he is directly speaking to the person on the other end and not a tech website which is why having engaging buttons is also very important finally is about the uh, ssl certificate that we spoke about that is the https so whenever you purchase an ssl certificate this is how your website you get this lock icon which which signifies to google that this is a secure website and no malpractices can be done through this part so there are two elements of seo when you are doing on site seo first is the content second is the tech element the tech element definitely as we have already seen is uh, finding doing the audit of your website working on the loading speed of your website fixing the uh, tags of your website that is mainly the tech part of your website wherein you definitely need to rely on your technical abilities or the developer of your website the second part is of the content that is uh, writing content on a daily basis writing blogs um, it is always recommended to have blogs of about 500 to 800 words adding keywords to that blog <clears throat> submitting infographics submitting uh, white papers if you are a technical website all of this is the part of the content aspect of an seo so here we finish with the on site part of the seo wherein you make your website strong enough to compete with your audience so coming to the off site part which is not as much as on site but it's very important in building the network of your website so the basics of off site seo first is building mini sites so this is something also called as building a uh, web 2.0 so these are like blogs guys these are like these are like blogs which you make and publish online to link back to your website so consider once again going back to the example of best suvs in india okay i am tata i want uh, more websites linking to my uh, current website so what i'll do is i'll make a blog on wordpress i'll make a blog on uh, blogspot or blogger now these are the platforms which have which already have a good amount of credibility on google what i'll do is i'll make third party blogs car review blogs or car information blogs and what i'll do is i'll put some content i'll put content say about 500 or 800 word long content which will have my keyword but will be written in such manner that there is a third person writing so i might write content on uh, how to score how to score more in ncap tests and then somewhere in the article i might mention about nexon having uh, a five star ncap rating and then we can have a link going back to the landing page of nexon or i might write about how to choose the right color for your car and somewhere i might just integrate one of my car models of tata over there so guys these these uh two point over these mini sites play a very important role in getting good amount of traffic on your website because once you're putting regular blogs on wordpress or blogspot you have more amount of people reading them and then reaching to your website directly through them that is one and second they play a very pivotal role in increasing the credibility of your website at a rocket speed and that plays a very good role in increasing the ranking of your website second part of offsite seo is guest posting we already spoke about this wherein we reach out to other websites having good credibility other websites or blogs which are manned by uh, other bloggers 
we reach out to them saying hey can we put can you put out an article for me or can i write and give you an article which will link back to my website many a times people will pay for such articles but depending on the credibility of the website depending on the credibility and the ranking of the blog google starts favoring your website also if you happen to get a backlink from there third is social media bookmarking social media bookmarking is when um, you submit the link on your of your website on various social networking platforms so here i'm not only talking about facebook twitter or linkedin i'm also talking about other platforms such as tumblr or uh, reddit or slash this there are there are tons of social media bookmarking websites which are available on internet which are made only and only for seo purpose and they play a very pivotal role in adding to that credibility point to your website fourth is about commenting many a times what you can do is you can simply go on wordpress you can go on quora you can check for uh, questions you can check for blog posts which are related to your nature of business and you can put in a comment say uh, you are you are once again you are a car maker and you read a particular blog or you read a particular question quora talking about the car safety and you can put in a comment saying hey that's that's a good view how about you check out some really safe cars over here and you put out a link to tata nexon and that's how things work and you get a backlink from there fifth is directory submission guys so just like we have uh, offline directories we have yellow pages we also have many online directories and enlisting your uh, business on those directories also work very well in getting you backlinks this is mainly for uh, newer brands it's for the, the new websites which are which have commenced their business uh, in in uh, very new times this plays a very important role in getting them the real recognition uh, in the azure tv sixth is pr and infographic submission so many a times you might have seen when you talk about statistics when you run a search to find out some statistics you see that there are many websites which have various infographics present on them you might have seen those infographics on google search uh, image search also these infographics are nothing but infographics made by some websites to add to their seo value so say you are say if you are a tech company okay which is into the area of say about uh, social listening okay and you want to talk about the current trends on social media through the massive social listening engine that you have so you want to portray that data you will make a nice infographic on say about a currently trending hashtag you will talk about all the trends which are associated with that hashtag you will talk about all the tweets which are there in on on that hashtag you will talk about the other insights you got from your engine on that hashtag and you will submit that infographic on 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 various infographic submission platforms that you have uh you can also consider pinterest as one of uh, a platform wherein you can add infographics similarly you have uh, platforms for pr submissions also wherein you write uh, press release articles about your company wherein you write press release articles about your brand and you submit them once you submit on uh, your press release or an infographic you get a backlink on from these websites also finally is youtube submission wherein you put uh, a nice video talking about your brand a nice video talking about your products and service and you put your website link in the description so these guys these are the ways to which you can get backlinks from really credible websites and form a nice network for your website so finally coming to the part of why do i need seo we just saw how to do an how to do seo what all are these facets of it what all are the types of seo what is the process but why do you need seo is ranking the only factor well i would i would want you to see this meme first because it says the best place to hide a dead body is the page 2 of google you really don't want your website along dead bodies right you want it on the first page that's why you need seo because one people believe in promoted uh, people believe in organic links rather than promoted links the world is smart guys the world is smart people can read that small ad uh, ad button written behind, below our search result people know that okay that's a promoted content and the link behind uh, below that is the is the content that is that is being propagated by google 
sixty percent of the traffic goes on such kind of links. So re reaching in the top five rankings is one of the uh, goals of any kind of business because the kind of traffic you get after that, it's massive, and that traffic turns into your core business. So SEO. SEO helps you to reach that space. SEO helps you to have more credibility, and with more credibility, guys, you get more traffic. With that, increases the uh, with with that increases the chances of conversions. Definitely, a good ranking website also shows its digital dominance. I mean, if I am a business whose uh, listing whose whose uh, website is coming in the top five in uh, Google search results. i will definitely be happy because i know my competitor links are below on my website i know that this is showing me as the dominant player in the market so definitely shows a digital dominance and with that your awareness also goes up so not just five benefits of seo but five core uh, advantages that you can derive out of seo and make your business a hit with search engine optimization Here are some interesting stats also to back up what I just said. As I mentioned, sixty-seven, not even sixty, sixty-seven um, percent of the uh, traffic which is on Google goes to the organic websites. Ten times more traffic is driven by search engine, and Google occupies eighty-eight point sixty-one of all the search engine traffic. This is the organic traffic that we are talking about. So this is the massive amount of people which are searching for the businesses, and if you want to take a dip into this pool and get these people on your business and turn them into your leads and possibly conversions, then SEO is the thing that you want to do. So that's about it. That's how you do it, guys. You make Google happy, and your SEO is done. Thank you once again. My name is Amul Parab, and I will open the round, Sakshi, for uh, questions. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for your time and guidance, Amol. It was a lovely session and quite informative, I must say. Because SEO for me has been my weakest part. I find it really complex, and I was able to understand a few terms now. So thank you so much. And okay. we do have, we do have some questions from our audience. I'll just go one by one. Sure. So um, question number one, uh, Shyam ask. Uh, is it possible for brands to come on the top of organic results overtaking web aggregators okay <clears throat> sham so uh, web aggregators definitely play a very pivotal role in uh, bringing your website on the top ranking results because these are just like a guest posts that we just spoke about okay but it is very important that you check that one these uh, web aggregators are one um, in 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 the relation of the business that you're doing because google prefers that the kind of backlinks or the kind of support you get from your uh, backlink network is also into the domain of business that you're doing that is one and second their credi credibility is also good because taking backlink from any random tom dick and harry website may may strongly impact your website in the negative sense which you really don't want to do thank you and uh, girish says hi sir how important are google reviews for seo I love you for this, Girish. Amazing part you have taken up. Definitely, it's something I had kept for the later part. Uh, but okay, so now that you have taken up this topic, I will talk about it. Uh, Girish, with changing time, Girish and everyone, with changing time, the Google listing, the Google My Business listing, which you see, has become a very integral part of SEO. Okay, it doesn't directly impact your website. but the uh, but the uh, uh, descriptions that you use there the search terms which you put in those uh, description part the question and answers which you put and the reviews that you get there and at the same time the replies which you are putting to the reviews it's very important girish that you are also replying to the reviews so these do play a very pivotal role in improving the listing that is one and second also indirectly but subsequently work on the ranking of your website so definitely they play a very pivotal role uh, abirami ask uh, would redirects impact seo yes abirami redirects definitely impact seo because see it's the name of clicks uh, sorry it's a game of clicks okay uh, google don't want their people to stay google don't want its audience to stay in a queue 
it wants the experience to be as seamless as possible so if i am google and i know okay sakshi is coming on a particular website and she has to wait she has to wait for 5 seconds while the website is redirecting i mean to hate that website i mean to bring its competitor up so definitely redirects is a big no no Yeah. Uh, Prasad asked, uh, "What are the common mistakes companies or SEO team should avoid in order to make the optimum use of SEO?" Okay. Um, okay. Companies, I I will bifurcate this uh, answer into two parts. Companies should avoid uh, completely relying on their developers because many attempts Prasad Prasad right Prasad what happens is. Uh, See, I am I am a e-commerce company. Okay, I have let's take stick to the example of shoes only. I have say about five products enlisted, and I want to add a sixth product. I will call up and I'll tell, hey, I want to add one more product. Just make a new page. Generally, what happens is uh, what happens here, Prasad, is developers make a duplicate of the existing page, and then they forget to change the titles. They forget to change the meta tag, and they only add a new product. so this is one major mistake that companies do so that is one they need to avoid duplication comes into the picture here and that's what they need to avoid what seo needs to avoid is uh, there are two things one uh, they need to avoid keyword stuffing many a times if you feel that okay keywords is something which is going to give me the right amount of ranking so okay i'll just put hundreds of keywords in one page no no that's not how it works you have a stipulated format that i just spoke about you have to add only four to five keywords on your website so do not exceed that that is one mistake that people generally do second mistake that people do is not staying updated with the changing trends of google google keeps on updating itself and it keeps on putting out news and news articles about their new algorithms which are coming so as an seo you need to stay updated with them you need to know which is the latest update for that you need to keep reading and if you're not doing that then that also is a big mistake you're doing uh ruchita ask is seo better than ppc okay ruchita definitely seo is uh, better than ppc but it will also depend on the uh, results that you're looking at and the kind of response that you're looking at uh, if you're a new product if you're a new brand with good amount of cash and you want to create an instant awareness definitely go for ppc because that is something which will give you instant rise but once that cash runs out blah everything goes out SEO on the other end, it will keep on building you, and it will just keep you on the top. Once you do six months of SEO, even even if at all you are not able to pay anyone, okay, and and you are not able to sustain your SEO activity for say about couple of months, nothing is going to happen. Your website will stay there, will still stay there. So SEO is for long term benefits. So both both have the different uh, pros and cons. Uh, Abhinami asks, uh, is it important for startups and small businesses to work on SEO at a very early stage? And do you have any recommendations for that? Yes. So Abhinami, um, new new companies SME should definitely work on something called as local SEO. Okay. They shouldn't have uh, higher aims such as I will I will rank on the top of the Google in in all the keywords which are international. No, they should go for something called as local SEO. So, for example, if you are setting up say a bottling plant in Mumbai, so you should do local SEO such as uh, bottling plant in Andheri or dot bottling plant in Borivli, which which sticks to your geography, so that at least anyone who is in that vicinity is searching for the business that you are in. it will give you a good boost at the same time remember to enlist your website on google my business because just like i mentioned gmb listing play a very pivotal role and uh, sham has another question that uh, when we outsource seo how can we ensure that they haven't done keyword stuffing in order to make our website appear on the top of organic results okay two ways to go about this sham first um always keep a maker checker whenever you are outsourcing so if your uh, age outsourcing agency is the maker you will be uh, the checker which will check all the content which is going live on the website but uh, second always keep all the access of your website to yourself that is your google analytics google search console as well as the admin access of your website in your control three learn the art of um, website audit which we just spoke about in the during the presentation and keep doing website audit from your end on monthly basis that is something which will reflect the mistakes our agency is doing and uh, ruchita ask any recommendations on top tools for seo site checkups definitely ruchita so first one is uh, sem rush also called sem rush definitely the best tool for go for second is alexa and third is uber suggest 
And uh, one last question from Sharmila. Sure. Uh, what is the difference between on-page SEO and technical SEO? Okay. So Sharmila, on-page SEO and technical SEO cannot be differentiated. Technical SEO is part of on-page SEO. Okay. On-page SEO is something, is it is the process through which you um, optimize your website. It is a process by which you make your website better and SEO friendly. Technical SEO is a fragment of it in which you fix the, uh, fix the tags, you fix the uh, coding of your website. And the second part of it is definitely the content part with, in which you add the blogs and the landing pages. Okay, I think that's all for today. We are done with the questions. Thank you so much for your time. It Thank you so great much, Sachi. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending the session. It was lovely yeah. speaking to you all. Have a good evening. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Bye.